Hello and welcome to the video. Hello, I'm up here. This is a gentleman called Marcus. Say hello, Marcus. Hi, hi, together. <laughs> so Marcus is the gentleman behind something called eCalc. Now, if you watch the channel a lot, you will already have seen multiple videos where Marcus and I have used eCalc to explain some of the basics about motor and prop selection for fixed wing, because eCalc is a fantastic tool that allows you to plug in all of your numbers to figure out what the optimum motor and prop setup needs to be or if you already know what your motor and prop setup is you can plug all the numbers in and find out things like what the static thrust is going to be what the approximate top speed of the model is going to be how long it's gonna fly for now the thing with eCalc what I didn't get when I first started using it was it seemed really complicated but it's actually much simpler than you think and although eCalc is something that you have to pay for it's a subscription based service it's far cheaper to use eCalc to get the right answer first time than to do what I used to do, which is buy a motor, stick it on the model, take it for a fly, not really like it, buy another one. And after three motors, you like Goldilocks and the three bears, you eventually find the perfect motor combination. It's a very expensive, iterative way to do it. So I now use eCalc all the time. So I thought it would be fun as I have a live example of something that I need to figure out the motor and prop for is for Marcus and I to do it live here in a video. Now the model that I'm interested in setting up here is this thing here. This is the Eclipse and White Wake. Now this is a 3D printed plane. Uh, I didn't actually print this. I need to say a big thank you to a gentleman called Steve here in the UK who printed it for me over eight days. It's all together and now I'm getting ready to get put the electronics in. Now Eclipse and do offer uh, some recommended setups for both motor and prop, but that is a recommendation. And with eCalc, I think we can get a lot closer to what I want. Because in the initial videos that I put out about this particular wing, people have talked about the fact that there are better options than those that are recommended on the Eclipse and website. And it's interesting with motor and props because what is best, and I'm using air quotes up here, what's best depends on what you want out of the system. Do you want more endurance? Do you want higher speed? Do you want easier hand launching? Do you want a combination? So best is very subjective. So I know what I want out of this particular wing. So let's go through this live. Now, again, all of the links down below to eCalc and uh, all of the information there so you can go and do this is included in the description below. But before we get into the weeds, what we're gonna do is use Uncle Marcus's defined process to actually get to the answer. So what we'll do is let's just jump onto eCalc and Marcus, could you just talk us through about how you find the optimum motor and prop? Uh, in eCalc on the upper right hand corner you have a help section. When you choose this you have a lot of description what to do and how to do and how to interpret the results. And here you find also a guidance how to choose a reasonable motor. And basically what I'm doing is just follow this process. So first you identify the power requirements. Then secondly, you choose the battery you have already in stock or you want to use. Then you pick the correct prop. And at the end, you size the motor and it's KV. That's basically the process we're going through. So I've used this same process to have some ideas before we go into the eCalc system itself. I have assumed that I'm going to need 200 watts per kilogram. That's the middle number for dynamic, aerobatic and warbirds. And the weight of the model, I've kind of figured this out. So I think it's going to be about 700 grams just for the plastic pieces, 15 grams for the servos, 180 grams for the battery. 100 gram for the flight controller and miscellaneous electronics, 50 gram for the ESC, and the motor's gonna be about 80 grams. So all up, my model's going to be about 1.125 kilograms. Let's assume it's gonna be 1.3 kilograms of safety, because it always ends up weighing more than you think, just the way it works. So with that, 1.3 grams times 200 watts is going to be 260 watts. So that's where we can start. 
So let's actually fill this in together. This is the eCalc page, and Marcus, do you want to ask me the questions for this particular model, and we can fill it in and see what answer we get? Yes, we, we start with the model. As you see, I have already entered your uh, 1300 grams here in the upper left corner. The wingspan is something that we need to know is 1.75 yeah. meters. And I know that because I'm just reading it off the Eclipse and website. Wing area is 30 dm squared. 30, yeah. And again, getting that from the website. So, and next, uh, what you have already a battery in stock you want to use? Yeah, so I would like to use the high capacity but compact 2200 4S batteries that I have already here. So if we can use those, that would be great because it gives you quite a lot of flight time of a relatively small battery because there isn't a ton of room inside this 3D printed wing. And it's a 4S. It's a huh? 4S, correct. Yes. So then next is uh, we choose just any, any uh, ESC for the time. We fix that later. And next is what uh, brand of uh, motors you would like to use or, or is your favorite brand? So for me, I tend to fly Sunny Sky or T-Motor motors these days on fixed wing whenever I can. So then we choose uh, Sunny Sky from the list, your favorite motor. And now we have to calculate what size of motor we need about. You said you would like to have 260 watt power for this uh, wing? Yeah, so something around there I think would be safe. And I, as a rule of thumb, now we're going to calculate the weight of the motor. The motor should be about 3 to 5 watt per gram. So we divide your 260 by 3 watt per gram and we end up at about 80 to 90 grams for your motor. Very quick insert here into the video. This is something that we thought about after we'd actually recorded this piece. You can actually search for a motor using the specific weight. Now we've already figured out that we need a motor that's going to be about 50 to 80 grams. So if we click on the search button here under the motor, then a little screen pops up and we can choose the manufacturer that we want. So we will choose our friend Sunny Sky and then we can actually search via the weight so we want something here from 50 to probably about 80 grams and then once we've got those two numbers in here we can just click search and it'll give us all of the motors from sunny sky that are in that weight range and there is the one that we're about to use once you've seen one that you like you can just click the arrow here to the left of it and it will plug it in ready to do the calculation so this, this uh, motor comes very close to what we calculated, so we try this one. Uh, propeller, I, see, I think you're going to use an APC or a different um, propeller? APC is great for the test. Uh, eight inch is the maximum diameter that it will run at. So, so seven or eight inches is, is probably fine. So we try first with a eight inch and for normal props we use about 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 of the diameter as pitch so we end up around five inch of pitch to start huh? as a starting point so now we get the results we have here a, a little remark that we are overdoing the maximum wattage so we just reduce the pitch a little to four inch, recalculate, and now we are already in limits. Now, what we can see is here you draw 25 amps. So now we can choose the ESC according to this. So I would suggest to have enough margin and headroom, a uh, 30 to 35 amp. ESC and here we go with the final result. Now you see static thrust is uh, 1300 that's about uh, 
weight thrust to weight ratio of one to one that sounds great for hand launching what we can also see is the maximum climb rate you can achieve it's around eight meters per second as a rule of thumb nine meters per second is about an angle of 45 degrees climb angle so you close to to 45 uh, degrees of a climb angle. What we also see is the pitch speed, the uh, 96 kilometers an hour, and this is in theory the maximum uh, speed you can reach. So just be aware that when we're talking about pitch speed, the pitch speed is the speed of the air coming out of the prop. Obviously yeah. with the drag and everything else on the model, the actual top speed you'll be able to achieve is going to be less. So this model is probably going to be more like a 50 odd mile an hour wing rather than 60 miles an hour. So now we've got this basic answer, we can start to play around. And this is one of the really cool things with eCal. We can change the motor, we can change the KV, we can change the diameter and the pitch of the blade to figure out what the optimum setup is. Because for me, I'm interested in longer flight times. I'm going to be hand launching this wing. So for me, it's more about efficiency and static thrust than it is about top speed. And I'm going to be cruising around the sky. This isn't going to be set up as a burner. I'm not interested in 100 mile an hour plus speeds. So let's have a look at some of these numbers and talk about how we could tweak all these bits in eCalc to see what the impact is. So what we can see here is if we look across this screen, we can see that the mixed flight time is 7.3 minutes. And I would like a little bit more. However, if we scroll down a little bit to the graph underneath, then we can see that if we're flying at about 50% throttle, then you know what? We're going to go about 31 miles an hour and we can fly for about 21 minutes. And that's not bad. 21 minutes is kind of what I'm interested in. I would like a little bit more if possible. Now one of the things we can do to be more efficient is we can reduce the KV and we can increase the size of the prop but there's also other ways around it as well. So Marcus why don't we try and change the motor to something like a 1250 KV motor and see what happens. Yes, we can choose a 1250 kV motor, so I just look for one. Here down we have a 1250, about the same, same weight, and we do the calculation. So now we are using less peak, peak current here, and we have already a mixed flight time up to uh, 8.4 8 minutes. However, the static thrust is reduced now from 1300 something to 1200. So this setup would still work, but uh, and we've gained a little bit more flight time, but we've only sacrificed a little bit of static thrust. Now, one of the other things that we were talking about before we started recording was we can start to play with the prop and sometimes going with a larger prop can be more efficient but sometimes going with a smaller prop can be interesting to do as well so let's let's do that let's go from a eight to a seven inch diameter prop and start ramping up the pitch and see what that does especially when you are cruising uh, in flight with reduced thrust setting then you can gain flight time by increasing the pitch speed so we reduce the prop to 7 inch but increase the pitch to 5 inch or even 7 inch now we are regarding the peak current in the same ballpark but let's see what what happens with our cruising speed here again 31 uh, miles per hour as you requested and now we are already at 40 two minutes because we can cruise with less throttle on the same speed and therefore the current consumption is less. But we've paid a hefty price because again pu pushing the one parameter towards one parameter will pull you away from the other two and we can see here that although the static thrust appears to be really good it's jumped up to 1000 
505 grams because of that excessive pitch on the prop when we're hand launching there's going to be a lot of stalled air on that prop it's going to sound horrendous and you're actually going to have much less so hand launching is going to be hard work and you can see here because it says available thrust at zero kilometers an hour is now only 875 grams so this is one of those wings that you'd have to run down the field with and give it a real mighty throw to get it into the air safely so that's probably one step too far however if we pulled back from the excessive seven inch pitch on the prop we could probably make that a little bit better yes we can roll back to five inch then we have already 900 grams of thrust because of stall because the prop is still stalling and when we go back to 31 miles per hour now we are at 30 minutes we can go for even further back four inch so but now we have no stall at the prop say, same static thrust at, at uh, zero kilometers per hour so that means no stall but now we will have only 26 minutes of flight time so that, that's always the trade-off, as we mentioned in the videos before. So either, either you sacrifice static thrust for speed, or you sacrifice speed for static thrust. So that, that's always the trade-off, and you have to choose what is your goal or your uh, most favorite uh, parameters. Is it static thrust, or is it for hand launching, or is it uh, speed in, in flight. So hopefully that's been interesting and I now have a much better idea of what motor and prop combo I need to go and order so I'm going to do that now and in the next video we can put all that into the wing and then we can take it to the field and maiden. So thank you to Marcus for spending the time with me this morning to help go through this. I thought it would be interesting to show you a live example of how you can help yourself get to the right answer faster with eCalc but also do all the what if stuff uh, particularly if you have a specific plane in mind and this is great for 3d printed planes but also for hand built stuff as well or even ic to electric conversion now marcus has very kindly offered a 10-day free trial so if you want to have a go with ecalc and play with this kind of stuff uh, there's a link down below with a code that from the release of this video will give you 10 days to go on there and have a play and I'd recommend that you do if you are hovering over two or three motors to prep click the order button stop don't go to eCalc and find it out so thanks again to Marcus for this don't forget there's a complete series about this when the motor and prop school I'll put a link down below that explains awful lot more about whether or not you want efficiency whether or not you want static thrust for easier hand launching or whether or not you're all about speed. Those three things and how you get them and how you can use eCalc to push in each of those directions and try and minimize the compromises are all covered. So join me next time where we'll put this motor and prop that we've just figured out into that wing. Thank you for having me. See you next time. Bye, Lee. Bye, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.